Hi, and welcome to Heart Sisters. I'm Sabrina Tootin, and I wanted to put a channel out there for Christian women, a channel that shows women how to uh, build better relationships with their husbands, their boyfriends, their um, relationships at home, and at, it'll spill over into your work life, your social life, everything. Just got to make sure that we're building on good Christian principles. Um, I wanted to touch on a topic today, uh, and we're going to build some fires. We are going to be looking at the married women, and we're going to try to build some fires in your life. We're going to use that word fires as an acronym, F-I-R-E-S, right? Okay, you follow me? Everything's good? Okay. Okay, first and foremost, let's look at the F. F is for faith. You and your husband, you and your partner, you and your boyfriend need to have compatible faith. And you need to have strong faith. Faith that comes in and weaves into your relationship every day. Why do I say compatible? Here's why. Well, let's go to the book. Let's look in 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. In the 14th verse. It says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? See, you can't mix no faith and faith. It doesn't work. Let me give you an example, a practical example, okay? All right, let's say you're playing a card game. You are using one set of rules for your card game, but your spouse is using another set of rules. How are you gonna know who wins? How are you gonna know who's doing it right or wrong? How are you gonna know a guideline for the game? You're gonna end up with nothing nothing. It's better to be equally yoked, two Christians together, and it just makes things easier and it makes for a stronger relationship because you're both using the same rule book. Get it? Oh, it's so easy. Okay, let's go to the next letter. I. I is for intimacy. Not that, no. One of the most intimate things you can do with your husband, other than that, is pray together. Praying together is incredibly intimate and it will build your relationship. It will make you stronger and closer than you've ever been. Just think about it. You're grabbing each other's hands. You're connecting. You're actually bearing yourself wide open. Praying for your husband and your husband can pray for you. You can uh, pray for other people, people in your family that have needs. And you can pray about anything. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, yeah, we all do prayer when it's time to eat. God's great. God's good. Let's thank Lord for the moment. Right? But that's nothing. That's not really connecting. Herb and I, Herb's my husband, we like to do intercessory prayer. And that just means that we like to pray for other people. We like to take every one of their needs and just pound on heaven's door and just go before the throne and just lift up every single need that anybody asks for us to do. We love to pray for people. But we pray for each other too. And we have common needs that we need to pray for each other with. It builds a strong relationship. If you don't pray with your spouse, I'm going to challenge you right now. Do it. Just do it. One time. Once you get past the awkwardness of that first time of praying together, oh, it's bliss. It's absolute bliss. Now we're up to R. Okay. R is for respect. 
respect your man. Show him respect. And he will show respect to you. Isn't that great? You don't have to beg. If he feels as though he's being respected, he will in turn respect you. It is a two-way street and it works. <clears throat> One thing I beg you, don't do, don't ever do, is the cardinal sin. Don't ever compare him, who you're with right now, never compare him with some old bay back in the day because that is a great way to hurt him, smash his ego, make him feel like the lowly worm, and he is not going to respect you because that is mean. Don't do it. Don't do it. And never throw your man under the bus. Don't ever in public go on and on and on and on and on about all his faults. You know what? Facebook is the wrong place to gripe about your man. Don't do it. Keep your dirty laundry in the hamper. Oh my gosh. And it is amazing how many women say horrific things about their man on Facebook. Oy. You gotta know something, ladies. Uh -huh, da -da -ha -ha. Learn how to control it. This is your tongue. Learn how to control it. Watch it. You know what the rule book says? The rule book. Over here in Proverbs. Uh, let's look at Proverbs. Where are we going to go? I didn't forget where I'm going. 27, 15. Listen to this. A continual dripping on a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Ew. Who would want to be compared to drip, 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 drip? That's a nagging woman. Who would want to have to be called the nag? That's horrible. Really and truly, ladies, seriously, and all seriously, men run on and crave respect. Their egos need it. In order for them to be really 100% at their best, they need to feel like they're respected and they're loved and they're admired. But you gotta show it. You know what? If you if you see he took the trash out and you didn't ask him to, give him an attaboy. Hey, thanks for doing that. I really appreciate it. If he comes out to go to work and he's looking especially cute, <laughs> then make sure he knows it. Oh, cutie man, you're looking fine today. Tell him, tell him. He needs to know this. It bolsters his ego. But it's not just a matter of ego. It's a matter of he can function much better at his job, much better out in that big bad world if he feels respected. So respect is definitely a tall order to fill. Puppy break. Look, it's my Jimmy. My little stinky Jim. The next thing is E, enemy boundary lines. Draw a line and say, okay, sorry, you don't get to come in. Enemy, out. No. God dwells in my home. And where God dwells within, you can't come in. Got it? Uh, one thing I did when we moved into this house was uh, I took some anointing oil and I prayed in every room and I anointed the doorways and, and I just cast out anything from the previous owners that may not have been pure, may not have been clean, may not have been of God because we didn't know who the people were that owned the house before. We didn't know what went on here. So I made sure that our house was a dwelling place that was peaceful, stress-free. So, I mean, look, when your husband comes home or your spouse or your, I mean, your, your partner, your boyfriend, when they come home and they have had it and they got that look on their face of, I'm spent. Okay, fine. Enemy has to stop at the front door. Don't come in. Can't come in. Look, I'm a housewife now. Uh, 
I cook, I clean, I do laundry, I plan meals, um, take care of the social things. Now, a lot of people may think, oh, what a crummy life you've got. You're just a housewife. Uh, no, actually, it's very important because my job means my husband has dinner. My husband has clean clothes. My husband has no stress about this house. That's one stress he has no need to worry about. Let him be concerned about dealing with the world out there, dealing with his job, which he's now retired from, but just making sure that he can focus on the things that he needs to. You need a little encouragement? Read Proverbs chapter 31. Now, no woman can live up to that, but it's a really good thing to look at as a goal. Eh, just saying. So, if, if, oh, and you know what? Somebody told me one time that being a housewife, well, you don't get paid. Uh, yeah, you do. I get paid in appreciation. I get paid with clothes and food and vehicles and a house and not having to worry about where my next meal's coming from because mama don't miss no meals. Uh, anyway, just make sure that you make a boundary line uh, in prayer, whatever, to keep the enemy away. Hmm. I love me some coffee. Mm, okay. The last letter that we're going to look at is S. We're going there. I'm going to talk about the S word. Submit. Now, a lot of people think that means you're supposed to roll over. Yes, please. I'm your servant. No, that's not it. Look, let's go to the book. Uh, this is Ephesians in Ephesians, and it's the fifth chapter, <clears throat> and it's the 22nd verse. Let's start here. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. But first and foremost, that first verse, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. We submit our will to the Lord. Why can we not submit our will, our overbearing will sometimes, to our husband? Let's think of it in practical terms. Okay, let's say that there's an army and there's two leaders. One is a general and he's really tough and he's really strong and he's a great leader. And the other guy that's leading the army is a colonel, still really high up in rank, just slightly under the general, commands a lot of respect, just a little bit under the general. Well, guess who you are, ladies? The colonel, not him. But I do love some fried chicken. Um, anyway, um, just make sure that you will allow him to lead. Let him be the general. Colonels can lead in, in hundreds of ways. But when push comes to shove and there's a really big decision like spending money or not spending money or doing something or not doing something and, and you're at odds, you want to do it, he doesn't want to do it. He wants to spend the money. You don't want to spend the money. And it's getting to be a real sticking point in your relationship. Submit. Not, okay, you win. Not that. Just, you know, I see what you're saying. And I think you're right. Let's do it that way. Do you know how many problems that would solve in a relationship? Now, some women are like, well, I can't because I have to do everything and he's not a leader. Well, it's probably because you're not letting him lead. Let him lead. You've got to give him a couple of maybe false starts if he's not comfortable being a leader. Maybe you may have a few false starts and, and you may trip and fall a little bit. 
but I doubt it's going to be anything that's so traumatic that you'll never recover from it. And these are learning experiences for him and for you. Release the reins a little bit. You don't have to be driving that horse all the time. Let go. Just let go and let him be the leader. So just submit a little bit. Remember that verse about the nagging wave? Gotta let it go. Just gotta let it go. I'm glad because my husband is the spiritual leader of our home. He is the priest of our household. Um, yeah, I balk at a lot of things. But in the long run, he has the final word. And it really saves a lot of problems. There's no reason why you can't just let go. As to the Lord, as to your husband. So this has been the first installment of Heart Sisters. I'm hoping that I'll get lots of sister friends with uh, you guys out in YouTube land. Um, make sure, if you would, uh, if you've got a topic that you think would be good to discuss on here, put it down in the comments below or contact me, Sabrina Tootin, on Facebook. Uh, I'd love to get to know you. Also, if you would share this on Facebook, um, we can get the word out that there's a new channel and we can get lots and lots of sister friends watching. Also, there's a rate the channel, a thumbs up, oh, thumbs up, and a thumbs down, over, I think it's on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, if you would, rate the channel. That would be terrific. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this, and I can't wait. I've got another little idea <sighs> pinging around in here, and I can't wait to start another one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, uh, <laughs> My oh oh my husband, my husband is Reverend Herb Tootin. If you'd like a really good teaching, he rightly divides the word. Go over to Teachable Moments channel. He has got a great. Uh, he's, he's up to two videos now. We just both started our channels. He's he's got two videos and they are terrific on. Uh, scripture and he gets down to the nitty gritty and really the the history and the understanding of the words and 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 really really does well at, at, at teaching. I'm not a teacher. I'm a talker, but that's okay, I guess. <laughs> so make sure you come back. Uh, sister friends, it's been great. Love you. Mean it. Until next time, God bless you.